Hi, Dr. Osborne here, and today I want to talk a little bit about gluten and its impact on hormones. And specifically, I want to talk about a scenario I see very frequently in my clinic. And as women coming in with symptoms premenstrually, they may complain of around their cycle of depression or swelling or bloating. They may complain of headaches that occur or of excessive carbohydrate craving. These are all signs and symptoms of premenstrual syndrome. And we see this oftentimes correlated back to gluten because we know that gluten can cause a disruption in hormone function. But the scenario here is that oftentimes these women who have these symptoms have been placed on some type of estrogen or artificial estrogen based medication. And the problem with that is whether it was used for birth control or whether it was used for the control of their symptoms is that these artificial estrogens actually contribute to vitamin and mineral deficiency. One of them that it causes magnesium deficiency. And we can also see these nutrients creating t and contributing to zinc, vitamin B2, and vitamin B12 deficiency. So we're talking about a drug that's being used to treat a hormone disruption it potentially was in the first place caused as a result of eating the wrong food. And so now, instead of correcting the food problem, we've interjected with a medication that induces vitamin and mineral deficiencies. And so then now the next question becomes, well, what are the symptoms that are associated with these vitamin and mineral deficiencies? Well, if we look at magnesium, magnesium deficiency, prolonged magnesium deficiency is going to cause muscle spasm. Magnesium deficiency causes... Fatigue, it causes depression. Magnesium deficiency can cause your blood to become too thick and lead to lack of oxygen to your tissues, and that can cause, aside from muscle spasm, can create muscle pain. Magnesium is responsible for thousands of different chemical reactions in the body, so there really are a lot of symptoms linked and associated to it. And so when we're taking a medication that causes the deficiency, at the very least, as the physician ordering for the drug, we should be monitoring magnesium levels. So if you're on one of these types of estrogen-based drugs, make sure your doctor knows that you need to have these levels monitored, right? Zinc deficiency. Zinc is also responsible for thousands of different chemical reactions in the body. Zinc helps regulate immune function. Uh, that's one of its primary roles. Zinc plays a role as an antioxidant. And so as an antioxidant, what does an antioxidant do? An antioxidant protects and preserves your DNA. And as a female, what does that mean? What does that translate to? Well, having a good antioxidant function means you age less aggressively, so you age gracefully. And I've never met a woman who didn't want to age gracefully, so we don't want to induce a zinc deficiency as a result of taking a medication that is only covering up the symptoms associated with eating the wrong food. So we've got zinc with immune dysfunction. We've got zinc as an antioxidant. Zinc also plays a role in producing digestive enzymes. So one of its primary functions is it makes the proteins that help to help you digest the food that you're eating. So a zinc deficiency can lead to, subsequently can lead to maldigestion, right? Can lead to maldigestion of other nutrients and that can cause a whole, uh, a whole other issue in and of itself. Zinc deficiency can also cause or contribute to prediabetes. Zinc is necessary in your body to make the hormone insulin. And if you are not making insulin properly, then what ends up happening is blood sugar can't get out of the bloodstream and it ends up locked in the bloodstream. And that blood sugar can't get into your cells so that your body can make energy. So not being able to produce energy, you can suffer with a lot of different types of symptoms. Hyper and hypoglycemia, fatigue, lethargy, these are just some of the more common things. Now, vitamin B2 deficiency can also be induced, induced as a result of taking artificial estrogens. And vitamin B2 plays a role also in energy production. If you ever studied biochemistry in school and you remember that horrid cycle called Krebs cycle, well, vitamin B2 is also known in medicine as FAD, flavonid, or flavonadenine dinucleotide, which is a chemical that the body needs in order to produce energy. So without vitamin B2, we can become basically energy deprived and very, very fatigued. We always hear the B vitamins are important for energy and that's what we're referring to here. Vitamin B12 deficiency. Boy, vitamin B12 we know can cause a lot of different types of problems. It can cause fatigue, brain fog, depression. Vitamin B12 deficiency can cause myospasms or muscle spasms. It can cause joint pain. Vitamin B12 deficiency can cause anemia which then leads subsequently to 
uh, oxygen deprivation, and that can lead to all kinds of other symptoms. So again, what happens when we go to the doctor after we've been on estrogen because we were prescribed it because we had a hormone imbalance and we were trying to regulate a hormone imbalance, but the hormone imbalance was really caused by gluten, and then we've ended up developing all these other problems. What's the next step then? Well, if we have maldigestion or heartburn, what do we get? Generally, we get an antacid. Uh, or we get something like Nexium or Prilosec or some other type of medication that um, is designed to reduce acid production in the stomach. Well, when we reduce acid production in the stomach, guess what we induce? We induce zinc deficiency. We induce vitamin B12 deficiency. Those two nutrients require acid to be absorbed. But additionally, we end up with depression. And so what does the doctor want to prescribe? Usually an antidepressant. Antidepressants have been shown to deplete B vitamins as well. So now we're depressed. We take a drug to correct that, but we become B vitamin deficient. So now our energy levels start to drop. And now we're not depressed anymore, but we're very, very tired. And we're tired to the point we don't want to exercise. So we don't exercise. We gain weight. And then as we gain weight, what happens? We become depressed. So again, we're, we're kind of chasing our tail here if we don't address the origin of the problem as opposed to medicating the symptom. And then leading to this entire pathway here. If we have muscle spasm, generally a doctor is going to prescribe some kind of medication, uh, either a muscle relaxer, or ibuprofen, or some other type of non anti-inflammatory drug. Okay, so we get a prescription for one of those things, and so many of those medications, unfortunately, they will cause gastric distress. So your non anti-inflammatories like ibuprofen can damage the mucus lining in your stomach and predispose you to infection. But the other thing that it can do is it damages the mucus lining in your stomach is that can lead to additional vitamin and mineral deficiencies. And it can also cause an imbalance in the normal bacteria, what we call the normal flora, the normal bacteria in the intestines. And so now you can develop other intestinal problems as a result. So you can see... In this case, this is a scenario, again, that I treat very commonly, and I wanted to share this with you, and hopefully you'll learn something from it, is that oftentimes I'll see women who have hormone disruption, and it's caused as a result of gluten, but instead of removing the gluten or being told by the doctor to remove the gluten, they're prescribed an artificial estrogen. They take the artificial estrogen, and their symptoms improve to a certain degree, but over a, over a number of years, all these other conditions, nutritional deficiencies, and subsequent conditions develop, and then we end up with more problems than what we started out to try to fix in the first place. So if you're trying or if you're currently taking artificial estrogens like birth control pills or other drugs to help regulate your cycle or to help regulate your symptoms around your cycle, please be aware that this is one of the, the consequences or outcomes to that process without discerning the origin of the problem. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was helpful. Have a great afternoon.